The 2020 Toyota Tacoma is no good, according to Consumer Reports, and should be avoided. Oh, this has got me fired up. Let's, let's see what they're talking about. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you today? Pretty fired up here. That's right. Consumer Reports says that the Toyota Tacoma is no good. It should be avoided. And that there are two better options that you should pick, right? Are they right? And what are the top two that you should consider as opposed to the Toyota Tacoma? Now, first of all, they do admit that the Toyota Tacoma is the most popular midsize truck, but still say it should be avoided. They state that it has a low reliability rating of three out of five, uh, and low customer predicted satisfaction rating of three out of five. Now, I find that kind of curious. Predicted based on what? Did they flip a coin? I, I don't know. But anyway, they say the ratings are based on feedback and testing from previous models. What? So they're not even looking at the 2020. They're basing this from what I saw as far back as 2017. That's three model years old. For example, they state that the 2018, two model years back, has transmission problems. Now, one really can't argue that. There were a lot of complaints about the Toyota Tacoma not, not being able to find the right gear to be in, right? And never staying in sixth gear. So maybe there's some credence there. I don't know, but that's the 2018. We're talking about the 2020. Uh, they also state that the Tacoma doesn't do well in comfort, value, and driving experience. I don't have any problems with any of that. Yeah, it's not a luxury SUV, but if you want a luxury SUV, well, then why aren't you buying a luxury SUV? I don't know. For the 2020, they say the cabin is noisy and acceleration is poor. I really haven't noticed a lot of noise. I do hear from people here or there um, complaining about noise in the cabin, to be honest. I don't really notice that much myself. Now, maybe that's because I have a louder cold air intake and I have a TRD exhaust. I don't know. So in all fairness, my truck's louder anyway. As far as acceleration goes, yeah, I can't argue that. The, uh, the Tacoma is not the quickest beast out there on the road. You know, I have the Jeep Gladiator and it feels a lot faster to me. So they might have a point there. However, they say the Toyota Tacoma is great for off-roading, has good fuel economy, and holds resale value. All positive reasons that you shouldn't avoid the 2020 Toyota Tacoma. Now, so what do they recommend, right? What are they saying is better? Well, there are two trucks. At number two, the Ford Ranger. They say the Ranger scored four out of five for reliability and four out of five for predicted owner satisfaction. Again, what are they using to predict this? Did they get the coin out again? I don't know. I don't understand this predicted customer satisfaction. Kind of means to me they're taking a guess. I don't know. They also say that the Ranger is more comfortable, better value, uh, and a better driving experience. You know, I drove a Ford Ranger and I was underwhelmed. I did not think it felt faster than the Tacoma. Maybe it is in a timed trial, I don't know. But from a real world driving experience, from a guy who has owned six Tacomas and currently has the 2020, I disagree. I think the Toyota Tacoma felt better on the road. The only thing I liked better about the Ford Ranger was the sound that the door made when you closed it. Kind of had that neat little thud to it. That's the only thing. I don't know. Now, they say that the owners, or that this means rather, that the owners are happier with the Ford Ranger. I don't know. Did they talk to a bunch of owners? Are they predicting it? I, I don't know. I don't know. They also state that the Ranger is faster than the Tacoma, as they mentioned, with a 0 to 60 time of 7.2 seconds. That's pretty good. That's compared to the Tacoma's um, 0 to 60 time of 8.2. So maybe 
With a stopwatch, the Ford Ranger is quicker. But again, I gotta say, it did not feel that way to me in a real world driving experience. Now, in the same breath, they recommend passing on the Ranger because it has a stiff ride, the controls are complicated, and it has a, a high step up to get inside the truck. So now I'm really confused. First they say you should get it, now they're saying you should avoid it, like the Toyota Tacoma. I, I don't know. So what's number one then? And do they really mean it? I, I don't know. Well, they say the suggest, they suggest rather, the Honda Ridgeline over the Tacoma and apparently the Ford Ranger, apparently, since they've said you should avoid both, I guess. This is even though the Ridgeline has a predicted, reli predicted, predicted reliability rating of three out of five. Now, wait a minute, that's the same as the Toyota Tacoma. So if they're equal in predicted, predicted reliability, then how is that an advantage? I don't know. They also say that the Ridgeline has issues with the electrical system. Now, in all fairness, as with the Tacoma, they're basing this on the 2017. I thought we were looking at 2020s. I, I don't know, I don't really get that. They say it has a predicted user satisfaction, this is the Ridgeline, uh, of four out of five, again, with this predicted stuff and an acceleration of 7.3 seconds from zero to 60. Well, that's a 10th of a second slower than the Ranger, but they like it better than the Ranger, all things considered, I guess. Of note, the Ridgeline is not an off-roader, this is what they say, due to its unibody and all-wheel drive. So it kind of sounds like we're comparing apples to oranges here, right? I mean, if the Tacoma is the superior off-roader, but the Ridgeline isn't, how can the Ridgeline be better than the Tacoma. I, I suppose it depends on what you do with it. I don't know. In the end, really, you need to make up your own mind, I guess, you know? Um, but I still go with the Toyota Tacoma. It is a truck. I wanted a truck. I didn't want an SUV with a bed on the back, which is what the Ridgeline really is. I mean, isn't it? If you get right down to it, it's designed to be more comfortable, apparently, and uh, give you a better ride quality or ride feel on the road with still the ability to haul some things in the back. It does have a lot of cool storage compartments and things like that. You can put a speaker in the back, kind of neat. But no, I would not say that it is better than the 2020 Toyota Tacoma. And this predicted uh, verbiage that they use kind of throws me a little bit. I don't understand what they're predicting this based upon. It sounds like they're going back several model years. I don't know, who knows. Anyway, there's obviously work to be done um, by Toyota on the Tacoma. Uh, some have said that it is lagging behind and in some areas, I think that's true. It needs to be quicker. It needs to be a little bit more comfortable, I think. And it needs a little bit better or upped hauling and towing capacity. The, the Jeep Gladiator out there beats it. So there are some, uh, some things that Toyota needs to look at with the Tacoma. Uh, do I agree that it should be avoided? No, no way. From my own experience, and again, I own a 2020 Tacoma. I've actually had a Ranger, although it was many years ago. And there is no comparison between the two. The Tacoma is far superior, in my opinion, uh, and is definitely a truck that should not be avoided. Anyway, let me know, leave a comment. Are you in your truck right now as you're listening to this? Are you heading off to trade your Tacoma off on a Ridgeline because apparently it's better? I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, if you haven't before and you're interested, check out my other channel. It is Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator, not even mentioned in this conversation, I guess. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.